Well, good day to everyone out there. This is Carpo on a beautiful Sunday. Well, an overcast Sunday, but it's still beautiful. And uh, today I'd like to talk for a moment about uh, our perceptions of the reality around us, or rather, you know, not, not our perceptions so much as uh, what keeps us, what holds us back from being what we really want to be and doing what we really want to do. Uh, what is it that keeps us from doing the things we know we need to do or tackling things that we know will benefit us or help us or uh, you know the what ifs I need to do this I should have done that and it's generally one of two things uh, that keeps us from experimenting trying new things or changing our ways it's either it's either our, our experience from the past that holds us back or rather our perceptions or programming through life or our fears for the future and sometimes the fears of the future can be based on past experiences in the sense that let's say one time you tried something and it didn't work out for you so you never want to try it again because you're afraid of failure this is pretty common in society people uh, get broken if you want to use that term uh, by life so to bring it all you know forget about the future and forget about the past and sit there at the present the now to ask ourselves how do we break away from these future and past strings which tie us and our fears of doing things a certain way it's as if we're uh, a steel ball on two rubber bands and bouncing back and forth never quite reaching the future or the past but always kind of in the middle somewhere not quite sure how to stabilize ourselves and one of the diff most difficult things about this is we hear people all the time telling people how to be happy or what will make them happy or what will work for them or what will make their life more complete. People will tell each other um, why they have problems. You know, a person will say, well, I feel this way. And another person will say, it's probably because of something that happened in your past. A person will say, well, this did happen in my past. Maybe that is the issue. And then they'll go through this conversation and the person will have this realization that the past has affected who they are now. But it doesn't change the fact that that's how they feel. And it's very difficult to, uh, I, I think, to try to put this simpler. Sometimes people think that they can just tell someone something about the way things are and that they're just going to change because of it all of a sudden. That's not very easy to do. And it becomes more difficult as you get older. And we see people become more stubborn as they become older. And it's not because they're unwilling to accept new information. It's because they're already overwhelmed with what they're trying to assimilate and process in their in their lives. Uh, they've been through it all, in other words, you know. Uh, you don't, you know, you may see a lot of young folks going between subject to subject to try and figure out what works for them. You don't see that so much in, you know, an 80-year-old guy. They're, it's not that they're stubborn. It's not that they're stuck. It's that this is the life they live. So as I get older, I'm finding myself, it's more and more difficult to break away from the past and the future to uh, really acknowledge that I'm in my own situation, you know, because of all the decisions that I've made in my life. And I think that 90% of the people out there are in the same boat. We create our own realities to an extent. And and this is, this is where my main point comes in, which is that uh, a person who has lived through a lot of turmoil and heartache and, and adversity in their life. Uh, maybe they dealt with a lot of racism, maybe it was abuse, you know. They're going to tend to view the world as a, uh, <clears throat> as a scary place. A person who spends too much time immersed in news, politics, watching too much internet, too much television, we'll see a lot of the negatives that are portrayed in the world and forget that this is a 1% of the population causing a majority of the problems and that most people are just generally good and just want the same thing that you want. They just want to live a life, you know, free of, of uh, uh, I guess, free from uh, persecution, free from slavery. and But we're living in a society that promotes slavery in a way. Not 
direct slavery, but rather economic slavery. So we're trapped. So in that sense, we can get angry about it and blame the system for our problems, but at the same time, we have to realize that most of us have the ability to do whatever we want with our lives. Um, if we wake up every morning and work from dawn till dusk, or dusk till dawn, till uh, to try to uh, get ourselves uh, into a better place or, or to do something different, you know? Uh, for anybody who's ever had a passion for a particular job or, um, or something, you know, you know how you immerse yourself in it. If you can get that motivation to do something, then you're, it's really limitless, the amount of things that we can do. And we really do hold ourselves back. And, uh, but it, like I say, it's not so easy to just point the finger. And that's what I'm really trying to say is that I, I, I will see a lot of people who will tell others, this is the reality we live in. And other people say, no, this is the reality we live in. But hey, the reality we live in is the reality we've created for ourselves. If I go out and I see, want to see the negative in the world, I will. And if I want to see people helping each other out, then I will. Um, I've had to draw my own conclusions in life and realize that if society was really as bad as some people want us to think it is, there's no way it could even possibly function as well as it does. In other words, uh, it's a failed, uh, not failed, but rather, uh, I guess it is kind of a failure of uh, society, what we've grown into, but at the same time, we've learned so much and we've gained so much. So many things have been done for good. You know, people like to think that, uh, that people are just greedy and do everything for money. Uh, when in reality it's just not like that. However, there has to be incentive and profit in order for people to want to do things. That's just the world. That's just the way it is. You know, people want to do things for others, but if there's an incentive for that, whether it be monetary or just a mental satisfaction, we do things because it makes us feel good. And uh, it's kind of hard to uh, determine whether we really do anything for for others at all, but that's a totally separate subject. And uh, <clears throat> I know how many phases I've been through in my life, and I know how many phases I go through in my daily uh, routines to where I learned how to grasp on to the most positive parts of my day and to make them the best parts, you know, to make them the ones I focus on, you know. I make a video when I'm feeling good. You know, I don't go out and make videos when I'm in a bad mood. Uh, the few times that I have, I always end up just <laughs> going off on some tangent or something. But, uh, you know, I don't deny my emotions. I don't deny who I am. I'm a human, and I'm just here experiencing all this, and it's amazing. But uh, the world's not a scary place to me, and it's not a dangerous place to me. It's no more dangerous than the likelihood that, you know, sure, you go swimming in the ocean, you might get attacked by a shark. And years ago, uh, there were all types of articles about how sharks are the killers of the sea and the man-eaters and everything. You come to find out sharks don't even want to eat humans. We're not even on the menu. But people really believed it. Why? Because a few people got attacked by sharks. Out of the millions who went swimming and never got attacked, we were focusing on those few shark attacks. Just like a few people who got mauled by bears. And we killed off all the bears and all the wolves because they were killing a few livestock. These things. We, we, we focus on the few negatives and we really blow it out of proportion. And we got to stop doing that. It's easy for us to feel comfortable in our little zones, but uh, it's not the reality. Uh, in other words, if we think the world's a scary place, it can be actually a protective thing for us to allow us to separate from other people and say, well, I don't trust anyone. You know, people are just ill, ill intent. It's not the world I live in, and I'm glad for it. <laughs> but uh, there are times when people do things that make me wonder. So I'm not close to the idea that there is, you can't, you can't just shut out the negativity. You just have to deal with it on a different level. And uh, that's how I see it. So I hope you all have a fantastic day, and uh, talk to you soon.